you know, next week is usually obviously the, all the rivalry games, you know, Ohio State, Michigan. I, I mean, to me, that's I Googled it the other day. 17 million people watched last year as the highest rated college football game in the last 10 years. We'll see what happens. We're recording this before the Harbaugh injunction hearing, whatever you want to call it. If to me, if he's able to coach, I, I, I think there's a chance like of the last like 30 years, that's the highest rated, most viewed college football game. It, maybe ever. I, mean, I think the buzz, the drive, obviously, you know, I was shitting on Ohio state a couple of weeks ago. They're clearly pretty good. And they're definitely, as you said, better on defense now. Uh, but that game, I mean, I, is there any other college football game this year that's going to sniff that in terms of the importance going into it? No, I mean, not until, yeah, the national championship, depending on what you the get. Playoffs, like, yeah. Yeah, the college football a semifinal matchup. The, yeah, that will, that'll, if both teams are undefeated, which they, they should be, then, yeah, that'll smash the, even last year's crazy numbers. The other thing is that it's on, that game, which I actually hate. I mean, that I, I sometimes I go back and forth. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. But that game's on at noon. Yeah, so everyone's awake. And yeah. there's no other game on that, you know, gets competing interests. Like next week at, at noon on Saturday, uh, like, yeah, there, there's going to be nothing else to, to compete. Well, I think with. these so, networks know you don't even attempt it. There's no point. You're not yeah. putting Auburn, Alabama. You don't want to waste any viewer. Just let that stand alone. Because now, yeah. I mean, Harbaugh's taking this to another level, as he usually does with all the craziness. And Ohio State's matched him just because they keep winning. Uh, so it's just, I, I mean, listen, I, I'm not trying to get ahead of ourselves. We got a weekend this, and we got a big game with uh, a playoff team. But that I fucking can't wait. And uh, yeah, I think he'll ultimately coach in it too. Cause there's like some precedent for two game suspensions for coaches in situations like this. So they suspended him for three. He'll get his hearing. And it just seems like it'll be one of those things where, you know, like these guys in the NFL and then they go to a hearing and then you reduce it. It'll be like, Hey, you got, we'll give you, you got two games you can coach for Ohio state. And yeah, the, the drama with the sign stealing and him returning and uh, a college football playoff position on the line. I, I mean, it's the big 10 championship because the winner gets, yeah. Iowa or Nebraska, you know, they kill him. Whether it was a phone call or a text message, I would bet every dollar I have that Harbaugh contacted someone at halftime and said, run the fucking ball every single play. They, they cannot score. And that quarterback, and I got, you know, I'm sure a million Penn state guys, my Penn state buddies were so fired up on this season. Like this guy, he's like the college version of Josh Allen. And I've watched him in two important games. He stinks. I mean, you can fire the offense coordinator. That, that quarterback is not good. And Harbaugh has wet dreams about like Kyle Shanahan. If, if he could win a game, 7 nothing, only run plays, they would gladly do it. And that second half, Harbaugh's dreams of games like that since he was a he was a wee lad in like the 70s. Yeah, no one would <laughs> – no one perf- would – I don't think anyone in the world – would be happier with a win in that fashion than Harbaugh, not even a. Would you say Shanahan pass. and and and, and uh, Harbaugh are the only two guys that dream of runs? Yes, definitely, definitely dream of runs. And uh yeah, the I have to give look, yeah, and he's terrible. There's like there's and yeah, he was a very highly five rated five star recruit. There's two kind of transitions when you're you know you have all the tools and you're a five star. You go from you know your high school to college, and you don't know you can have all the tools until the guy gets in there just because you, you're a five-star it, it comes down to just milliseconds of pocket awareness uh you know timing being able to read defense processing information milliseconds right it's very Cra- crazy crazy away game noise you know intense yep. environments yeah you gotta have poise short-term memory like oh, you have to have all, it's all these intangibles when you're talking about all you know among the kids that have all the tools and then so say you have a kid that does that uh and is really good in college that's one speed. That doesn't mean that you're going to be good in the NFL. Then that's the next question. Okay, you have to even be quicker and better and more refined than all of that. And then that's why, you know, you see a lot of these five stars jump to NFL and they don't have it. I mean, look at Bryce Young and Stroud. He clearly has it. But, yeah, that was an amazing game. I actually bet some Penn State were reluctantly uh, and came back to buy me big Jane games, just falls again. But my – the Michigan tackles are way down this year, and Penn State has – you know, some of the best edge rushers in the country. Kid will go in the first round, maybe another in the second. And I said, they're these Michigan tackles, they've been getting beat by like, and they didn't play anybody. 
I watched those first three series and I said, Michigan is not going to be able to throw the ball at all. They, I mean, they, they, McCarthy dropped back and he was under fire. I said, man, Penn State's going to be live in this game. They're going to have to, they can win this game ugly. And then credit to Michigan, even without their head coach, who, as you said, I'm sure had input, they completely outcoached them because they just made an adjustment. They would run on first, second. They would, then they would just run like quarterback power, quarterback sweep on third and long. Didn't even attempt to pass us the game. And Penn State never adjusted. They're still rushing the edges and then they were giving up lanes. Just that uh, coaching mismatch. Uh, and James Franklin got outcoached again. Shocker. Well, then to me, that, you know, that's a good little n- nugget right there because if Michigan handles business, wins against Ohio State, and is in the playoffs, whether Oregon makes a run, I mean, I watched that game against USC, their pass rush, they got dudes. Obviously, Florida State has the big time pass rusher, and they historically always have good defensive linemen. We know if Alabama, Georgia makes it, if they get there too, yeah, they have great. Yeah, Alabama rush. and Georgia, I mean, both those two teams are just going to have, I don't know, NFL defensive linemen. So that's. That's something I I didn't I didn't realize that I mean I I don't like them as much for everyone anointing them as just going to win the national title if that is a bugaboo against the teams that you have to play in those final like you're not getting TCU this year right yeah. you're getting you're getting a team that's going to have NFL pass rushers hell even yeah. if Washington makes it they they one of their pass rushers is really good you know he's yeah. a first round level talent so you're gonna have yeah, to you're not gonna be you're not gonna be able to do that right in, in the playoff games you run the ball like Kyle Shanahan against the Aaron Rodgers whatever five years ago with Jimmy Garoppolo you're gonna have to pass yeah and they and Michigan's run numbers are way down this year as a whole way down I mean they were running wild last year and you know they they had a left ta- their right tackle was kind of weak last year their center got drafted in the first or second round they got another kid who's pretty good but, uh, from Stanford who's I think a step below but the right tackle's weakness last year. He's still there. The left tackle got drafted by the Dolphins, and the replacement that is a, this Arizona State transfer who just is getting beat, and they're it's affecting their run game as well. So the run game hasn't been as good. Now they played nobody and they got away with it uh, all year. But that's one of the reasons McCarthy had has such good numbers going into last week because they weren't running the ball well. They were throwing it and they were playing all these bad secondaries. So yeah, I think the ultimate downfall of this Michigan team is going to be that offensive line. Um, but uh, we shall see. I, I also can't wait for Ohio State, Michigan. Okay. One big game this week. You mentioned the line has shifted over the last this week. I mean, Oregon State is really good. I, I think if I'm UCLA and I fire Chip Kelly, I mentioned this on the podcast yesterday. Jonathan Smith is my hire. He's from Pasadena. What he's done at Oregon State, his team is just kind of now he's a Chris Peterson disciple kind of wired and built like some of those Boise teams, a little different in the sense that the transfer portal, his starting quarterback, you speaking of five-star guys that couldn't handle it. Listen, DJ hasn't turned himself into some first round player, but he's definitely, I would say resurrected his career a little bit there. And this team is really physical. Washington has just not looked the same since that Oregon game when Oregon has kind of ascended, even though it looks like these two teams are destined to play each other. But uh, you know, the Apple Cup can get weird, and this it's not inconceivable all of a sudden Washington is going to struggle to win these. They're an underdog. Now, I've been to Corvallis when I was scouting. Tiny little town that loves their team, especially when they're good. That place is going to be fucking bananas. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be an intense environment. This is just kind of light up the scoreboard versus just tough physical team. Not that Oregon State can't score, but, I mean, under Jonathan Smith, they're really more of a run the ball, throw the ball to the tight end type operation, I, I would say, over the last couple of years. Is that fair? Yeah. I mean, this is a team that's built like more of a, you know, premier team in the 90s. Um, yeah. They they have arguably – I think they're going to get their their star center back this week from injury, too. They have arguably the best offensive line in college football, uh, and they're all just older, experienced dudes. Their offensive line is great. They have you know, two really good running backs and Damian Martinez and uh, Deshaun Fenwick. Uh, this team is an elite at running the ball. And what Washington cannot defend the run. I mean, at all. You they're bottom five and things like line yards, which look at like the push that they give up, bottom five and rush success rate allowed. And if you look at, you know, some of the teams that they play that actually can run the ball well, I mean, USC was running just every, a wide wide open. Every one of the runs was 10 to 20 yards. Uh so I mean, even like Utah last week, you go back to Oregon was running all over them. Um, so this Washington run D is very vulnerable. And the so what I think is going to happen, Oregon State should be able to move the ball at will here, just on the ground. And then safeties are going to have to come down. And this Washington defense 
I mean, look, Washington has been very fortunate. They beat Oregon by three. Oregon can't get its fourth down. They beat Arizona State by a touchdown at home. They don't score a touchdown. Arizona State can't make a field goal, then throws a pick six at the end of the game to lose. They only beat Stanford by nine. Uh, you know, Stanford is 500 yards in that game. Then they beat USC by 10 in a back and forth game. And then last week, they only beat Utah by seven. So they, they've won six straight games by 10 or less. They've been, they, and they've had injuries at safety and they just don't have the same depth as some of the premier teams. Yeah. So they've had other injuries on defense and this defense is vulnerable. So I think Oregon state who, by the way, you mentioned Corvallis 17 and one against the spread at home in their past 18 home games, 17 and one insane. Uh, so yeah, I, I, so I think Oregon state's going to be able to move the ball. Now, Washington, especially if they get McMillan back, they already have two of the best or other receivers in the country and, and you have Penix at quarterback, they're going to be able to throw it a bit. They can do that against anyone. And Oregon State, two good safeties. Corners, little weak. Uh, they're oh, just okay. So Washington's going to be able to throw it. But what Oregon State does really well and does better than almost any team in the country because they're just so well coached is they are elite in the red zone. And on offense and defense. So number one, because they can run the ball so well, they are they just finish drives off with touchdowns more, more times than not. And that's going to be easy to do against Washington. And then they they kind of bend but don't break on defense. Washington, meanwhile, they're really bad in the red zone on both ends. And part of that is their offense. Once they kind of get reduced in space, it's harder for that offense to operate. So I think Washington's going to be able to move the ball. I mean, that's just what they do. They're going to lead offense. But I think Oregon State's going to get a couple stops in the red zone. And they're going to finish off more of their drives with a touchdown. That's what it's going to come down to. I mean, this game should be close, competitive, but uh, it's a clash style. I mean, if you uh, a style clash, I should say. If you, you know, you're going to have this one team that wants to line up and shotgun, throw it all over the field, and the other team that wants to kind of just grind and pound you to death. And they can hit explosive runs too. So yeah, it's a. Uh, I-, I love this. The atmosphere should be great. I bet Oregon State. I think Washington goes down, and then. Uh, Oregon State could knock off Washington and then, you know, that gift with the Grim Reaper. And then next week they could beat Oregon, knock Oregon out. And this is what the Pac-12 does. They usually catabolize themselves. And they would go to the Pac-12 uh, championship game. I I got the uh, DraftKings Sports Casino right down the street from my house. I, I think I'm going to go down there tomorrow and place a large wager on Oregon State. That game's at night. That's... I, I think that's the type of game you just control the clock. You don't give their offense a chance. I, I like Jonathan Smith. Could be a could could be a nail in the coffin of his pursuit to a new you know, I don't even know if he'd leave. He's from there. He was a quarterback when Chad Johnson was a wide receiver. But you win a game like this with everyone paying attention on a kind of a down week night game. I mean, it's that'd be a big moment for the dude. So yeah. I, I'm a I'm a giant Jonathan Smith fan. 